Hi there, it's Karen Brown of Just Get It Done Quilts. I am just back from QuiltCon. Thank you to Barb and Stephanie and Sonia and Catherine and Laura and Eunice. Thank you all for stopping by and saying hello. That was a lot of fun meeting you. It was both a fantastic time and a totally exhausting time. And I apologize, but I haven't been able to put a video together recently. So today I'm just gonna do a quick Q&A based on all the comments on the videos. Here we go. Everyone has said such wonderful, nice things. Thank you all for your support. What is a hexi kit? This is my hexi kit, so let me show you what's in it. I'm pretty sure this is a pencil case. I was walking through a university with my son on my birthday and I asked him to get it for me. And I've just made a kit of English paper piecing hexes. In this compartment, I keep my scrap fabric where I cut hexagon shapes out of. In this compartment, I keep cardboard hexes that I wrap the fabric around and I've just punched them out of advertising postcards that have come in the mail. I keep a pair of stronger glasses here. I keep my scissors and my needles and thread. And then lastly, I, this is where I keep my finished hexagons. And when I fill it up, I just dump it into this glass container that I have at home. Many of you said, this is not masking tape, but painter's tape. Yes, it's painter's tape, but masking tape is a little bit more melodious when you're making up a title. But even if you do use masking tape, it's a little bit stickier. It's still good for picking up uh, threads in that, as long as you do not leave it on your fabric long-term for a quick lie down and pick up, you are fine with masking tape. On tip number five, Gertrude de Boer has asked me if I pin base once I have the fabric on the wall. And the answer is no. I have tried pin basting. I have tried doing it so carefully and it never seems to work. So I have gone to spray basting and I've used the hallway in my condo. It's actually a fire escape. And I use two different products. I use 505 Spray and Fix and Aline's Tacky Spray. And I bought both of them off Amazon. I'll put a link to them down below in the notes if you want them, but they're available everywhere. What sewing machine I'm using. I have two sewing machines. In this video, I'm using my older 910 Bernina. When I bought it as a, as a 19 year old, I said, this is gonna last me 30 years. And guess what? It has lasted me over 30 years. It's still a workhorse. It's the machine I use when I go to stitch and chat groups or on retreat. A couple of years ago, I brought a brand new machine, a 750. It was lightly used. I got it secondhand. It's a top end machine. It's got lots of bells and whistles on it, but it's big and there's lots of electronics in it. So I don't like taking it away from home. So Cheryl Davis asked me, is there any way to get rid of this horrid bump at the end? I have done something a little bit more decorative like this, but I'm sure you can get a lot more inventive. You can tuck it behind, you can cover it with a piece of fabric. You can turn them into tassels and hang them on the front. You can cover them with leather. Here's a clever person that's covered it with a button and Measured and Slow Studios did a beautiful wrap with some thread. Get creative, experiment. Somebody asked me, what is this quilt? It was hanging in the background. This is my circus tape quilt by Commonwealth Quilts. It's beautiful and they also have a link on pre-quilt so you can play with the colors and all sorts of different color arrangements. Deborah Graham asked me to do a video on a bullet journal with a quilty slant. I don't know how many of you use bullet journals or would like to use a bullet journal and I've made this little case for one. If you're interested in that, please leave your comments down below. I'll be happy to make one. Several people asked about my UFO. Right at the very beginning, one of my very first videos was unboxing an old UFO. And after putting together all the top pieces, I was quite excited. I thought it was near the end. I bought the king size batting. I bought a wide back and then suddenly, I had this moment where I had this really cool idea for a back, and that's where it is. It is sitting in a bag, and hopefully it's one of the projects I finish next. <laughs> I had one person ask, why would I allow my son to move back in the house with me? Well, the truth is, number three child left home quite early. He went off to high school at a private boarding school, and then he went off and did a five-year program at a university out of town. So we actually haven't had this son home on a full-time basis for a long time. So 
he gets a free pass for a couple of years. He's got a great job. He's working really hard. He's fun to have home. Lori Amato asked me about my sewing stick. This is on the side of my sewing table. I have put a little bit of Velcro on it so it hangs off the Velcro. This is for when you're sewing and you want the seams to be open. To use it, you set your seams as normal and then you place the seam over the hump and the stick. Then you open your seam and then press it one spot at a time with your finger. Apply the iron for a final press. Let it rest. I do not press my seams open when I'm quilting. And here's why. The green fabrics on the left have been pressed with the seams open. If one of your threads break, when it opens, the batting underneath is exposed. And if you've stitched in the ditch, your quilting doesn't have much left to hang on to. This can be a much harder seam to repair. If you've pressed to the side, your seam allowance helps protect the batting underneath. And if you've stitched in the ditch, your quilting still has some fabric to hang on to. And this can be repaired with a simple invisible stitch. Carol Krieger asked to see the back of my pinwheel block. So here it is. Mm -hmm. So I was asked by many people about starch. Starch comes in many shapes and sizes, and it's probably just as contentious an issue as whether to wash or not wash your fabrics. So this is what I know. Starch was discovered centuries ago. They applied it to fabric and they found that dirt and sweat did not adhere to fabric as much. That is why it was first used. And when we use it now, we use it now to keep things nice and crisp. If you wash your fabrics, all the sizing that comes in the material to begin with has been washed away. So you need that starch to give your fabric some structure. So you've got your fibers like this, and it's just a, a scaffolding around it to help it keep its shape. I know people that swear by this. They use so much that their fabric becomes like paper. You can cut really straight lines this way and you can sew pretty straight lines this way. But there's a downside to starch. It is a plant-based material, so you've got bugs that are attracted to it. You've got allergies. Honestly, I do not use a lot of starch. I also do not pre-wash my fabrics. It's mainly because I sew with fat quarters and I don't want to wash my fat quarters. So I only use starch when I complete my block and I've pressed it flat, I spray starch on it, and then I square it up. A lot of people have written in saying, I've seen somebody use a fingernail going down a seam, or I've got this roller going down a seam. I was told never to use steam. These are all kind of one question. Running your fingernail down a seam is just applying pressure. There's no heat involved. Will it distort the fabric? If it's a seam, not likely. If it's just a fold and there's a bias there, you do have to be careful and you're much better off just applying your finger in an even pressure. Using a roller, same thing, except it's a little bit harder pressure. I encountered a roller when I was learning to paper piece with Violet Craft. And that's perfect because not only do you have the seam holding it together, but you've got the seam attached to paper. So that gives it a lot of structural integrity. So as you're pushing it down that, it's less likely to distort. It can save you a trip to the iron. Now to steam or not to steam, that is the question. So we talked about those weak bonds, heat makes it your cotton pliable but when you add water it goes you know the reaction is so much faster so much more immediate and so permanent so in a lot of beginner classes they will advise you just to use a hot iron if you're making a mistake you can recover from it once you use steam you're pretty well committed and if you make a mistake and you distort that square you pretty well have to start over I personally new steam, but I will admit there's times that I wish I hadn't. Several people asked me if I use a tailor's clapper. Some of you may be going, what the heck is a tailor's clapper? Honestly, I only found out about a year ago when a person in my Instagram feed kept talking about it, but this is a tailor's clapper. It is a piece of wood. This one's made of oak. You iron your seam, you apply the seam, and you just let this rest on top. Leave it for about 15 to 30 seconds, and it absorbs the moisture from your seam, leaving your seam very, very crisp. 
I don't use it all the time, but I will use it when I'm having problematic seams. So many people were excited about the Prequilt app. You can find it at prequilt.com and the people at Prequilt have reached out to me. So hopefully we will be doing a collaboration video very shortly. Glory Grace K. She asked me, how do you organize your scrap? Well, I'm afraid that's a whole video unto itself and everybody has their own way. So stay tuned, possibly later this year. Many people ask me, where do I live? I live in Toronto. I've lived here since I was 10 years old. I come from the, originally from the Ottawa Valley. I went away to university and I lived in New Zealand for a year and I lived in Australia for a year, but then I've lived here all my life. I do have a couple of people asking, why in the heck am I walking my dog and doing a sewing tutorial? The reason is, is that I have a company that my husband and I own and I work full time. So I am often cramming in videos as I'm walking the dog on my way to work. So those are all the questions today. If you have any more, please don't hesitate to ask them. If you have any ideas for future videos, please put them in the comments below. So hopefully my life is back to normal next week and I can start working on my next video. So. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet subscribed, please subscribe below. And there's that little bell there down below. Ding that and you'll be notified every time I post a new video. So take care and I'll see you next time.